My name is Steve Buen. I'm the hydrologist in charge at the National Weather Service North Central River Forecast Center, located in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota. We do hydrologic forecasting for the National Weather Service uh, for the Central and Western Great Lakes, the Hudson Bay drainage in the United States, and also for the Upper Mississippi River. Uh, today, though, we're going to talk about a kind of a what has turned out to be kind of a little uh, value-added offshoot of our hydrologic modeling, and we found that it had applicability to this runoff risk. Um, advisory service. So just what is runoff risk and um, it, it is that decision support tool as Nicole was talking about to look at that short-term application decision that has to be made and, and making a good decision such that that freshly applied nutrient doesn't get washed off into a water body. And this is what you'll find as I go through the slides here that this is a science-based approach that is validated with actual on-farm data of actual cap of correlating that how runoff and when runoff occurs at the farm field scale with what models of hydrologic modeling when it, it says model. So they're correlated together. And so it, to encourage that voluntary behavior and that this is not just pure science and that it actually is looking at what's happening at the farm. And also, it, and what you'll, you'll see here is that it's heavily involved in that it's multi-agency. There's a, it's a working group concept in that it's not just coming from one avenue. It's, it's looking, at, looking at agencies, academia, and industry to come up with a high-quality tool that can be used by producers and custom manure applicators. So, you know, everybody knows why is this needed. We've had this kind of creep from... Um, just a few areas having hypoxic problems at the coast to basically everywhere on the coast to now on the inland, uh, the Mississippi River and a lot of inland lakes are having problems. So it just, it's becoming, in, it's in the news pretty much from the New York Times down to the Des Moines Register in, in the heartland. So runoff risk takes that, as Nicole said, brings a lot of things that are involved, whether it's the 590, restriction maps to uh, what an individual producer knows, to the, to the weather, the four R's. A lot of information has to go through that decision funnel that someone's got to make a decision. So we're just trying to provide that another piece of information to look at that, dyna that dynamic short-term decision that has to be made. And so um, when you look at the four R's, a lot of that has to do with agronomic things and the environment really is not taken into consideration. And we feel that this runoff risk advisory forecast is looking at, is this the right time for the environment for you to put that nutrient down there? You know, it also has to be the right time for the crop, but maybe you've got to stylize your, uh, or choose a better time for the environment to put that down because maybe the risk is just too high. So, and we'll see that illustrated here as we go forward. But okay, we'll step back here. Where, this just doesn't come out of the vapor. People aren't just dreaming this stuff up to do it. There has to have been an acute problem that's going to really drive this. And that acute problem for the upper Midwest was in Wisconsin, the winter of 2005, 2006. Numerous, um, you know, rainfall runoff events, snow on snow, all sorts of problems that you can see illustrated on the map there from runoff into a water body, fish being killed, wells private wells being contaminated with with runoff and the, with the legislature then at that time the, this is now this is the legislature telling the state agencies establish a system to advise farmers and applicators to identify the least risky time so that they can get their job done and so that's where this came from then the um, some state contacts at the um, in Wisconsin knew that the weather service did hydrologic modeling we started talking about how to do this, and, and what you'll see going forward here is what's come out of that. So in 2011, the version one, what we call of this system in Wisconsin, um, based on our just our standard hydrologic modeling that we were doing at the time, which was basically catchment modeling on catchments anywhere the size of maybe uh, tens of square miles up to five, 600 square miles, or even maybe up to 1,000 square miles in northern Wisconsin. And, and so we looked at our hydrologic models and what, when did they show uh, an inclination of runoff versus this, uh, what happens at the agricultural field scale. 
And so we were able to statistically calibrate that to come up with a low, medium, moderate, and high risk, and again, through this working group. And so this version one went live in 2011. Um, if you just Google or use your search engine of choice, Wisconsin runoff risk, this will probably be the first thing that comes up. Again, version one, it looks at things like snow melt and frozen ground conditions and seven days forecast rainfall into the future. A producer goes and clicks if they know that they're in a certain watershed or where they are in their county, they click on the map and they get the um, information right, pops up to them what the rainfall forecast is and what the, the, the runoff risk is. Um, Tony later will get into a little more details about the modeling. He's using the same modeling. That'll be coming up here in about five minutes. Well, the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative saw what, what was going on in Wisconsin and approached us about um, doing other areas of the Great Lakes. Um, and we decided uh, collectively that we kind of needed to address some of the shortcomings of the Wisconsin system, which was the large scale using basins that were hundreds of square miles. And uh, we went to look at another model that we have, and we'll see some details on it, a four kilometer model or about six square miles. Um, everyone kind of agreed that was gonna be much more down to the scale of what farmers might trust a little bit better. So ultimately what, and you can see in the pictures there what these sites look like where they're capturing uh, runoff from a farm field. We're using that data to statistically analyze our model output to come up with that stratified risk, that low, moderate, and high. We're going to, they're actually rolling out in Minnesota, Michigan, Ohio, and Wisconsin in 2017, and we'll see the details there. Michigan and Ohio first, and Wisconsin and Minnesota following. And, uh, and we'll see a little bit of details on what that funding from the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative has been, has been funding. The blue dots on the map are all the sites that we have these uh, uh, field scale monitoring sites at, many in Wisconsin, um, Minnesota, and the, uh, especially the Maumee Basin of Ohio, and then the Saginaw, in the Saginaw Basin there in, in Michigan. So this version two, this again, I said it's a four by four kilometer grid, and it's incorporating all of that uh, meteorological and land use and hydrological aspect of the soils and all that together and to come up with one picture. So you can, on the left-hand side of the screen there, you see you can represent on a gridded basis many fields and the, and the country will look different whether you're looking at soils, you're looking at um, for, uh, land cover, land use, you're looking at forecasted temperature, you're looking at precipitation. Well, our gridded model takes all of that together. We take the output from that model then pass it through that statistical algorithm that we've done by calibrating what's happened in the past from this field scale runoff. And then, so it, and then it's looking at what we're forecasting to happen out there. And then it can pick that out and stratify if there is a risk involved with the conditions that'll be evolving in the future. And again, this model, because it's a continuously run model that runs 24 seven, 365, it's a model that takes into account the change in the seasons and the, the temperatures and, the, and are things out of season? You know, is the temperatures cold or are they warmer? Has it been raining more, raining less? So it's all dynamic and takes that into account. So it, it doesn't require then everyone to have this inherent knowledge of, well, are things abnormal in the weather today? Is that going to cause me more risk? We're taking care of that for you right here. So here's what the web pages are looking like right now. Ohio. Uh, and you'll see the links to those in a, coming up here in a couple slides. But Ohio is out right now. Michigan will be going out next week. Wisconsin will be shortly following with Minnesota after that. And so these working groups come up with um, a way because they have to incorporate any particular laws or regulations in the states. They have to incorporate that all in here. So this isn't a weather service product. The weather service produces the data. The states have to take that data and shape it to their particular laws, regulations, and customs, and things like that in their state. They all have the same basic look and feel, but, but again, it has to be shaped to that. So what a producer can do here is, is zoom in right down to their site, right down to on the map where exactly where they're thinking about applying, click on that location, and it will display what the risk is there in a variety of graphical 
in tabular fashions. Again, this is a state or working group controlled environment utilizing National Weather Service data. So a little bit more about what the GLRI is doing. Um, they're looking at social science related to this. How do people use this? How do they interact with websites? That's being done out of the University of Wisconsin. Minnesota State University of Mankato is looking at um, model optimization, um, utilizing this, this field scale data that's being collected through the, the GLRI and other sources. And then looking in the future here, just project just starting with the Ohio State University and their consortium of other universities in Ohio the Western Lake Erie Basin SWAT model, they're gonna look at a retrospective of if we would have had these runoff risk forecasts in the past, how would that have led to, or what kind of nutrient reductions would that have led to if we'd have had 10% adoption, 20%, 50% adoption to illustrate to farmers how important it is to adopt these practices. So we're looking really excited to see the outcome from that project here in about two to three years. So. There's a lot of information on this slide. You'll have it available to you through the recording or through the handouts uh, where you can get at a, um, a promotional video that uh, NOAA produced with the runoff risk forecast um, and then also to uh, the different states there. 